What's up, guys? And welcome back to the video. And I hope everyone's having a great day. If you're new, welcome. My name is Jai. Welcome to my channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn your post notification if you want to. But thank you again for tuning into the video. Check out my channel. We are back with top ten, most amazing top ten. I think. I think that. I think that's the channel. And this is top ten abandoned amusement parks in America. When I think of abandoned amusement park, I think of abandoned, of course, and probably some homeless people or just creepy ghost energy. Let's check it out. Who here loves going to amusement parks? Maybe you love the thrill of the rides or indulging in the popcorn, cotton candy, and other artery-clogging treats. Either way, amusement parks are fun for individuals of all ages. There are more than 400 amusement parks all around the world, with a large portion of them being located in America. However, some of these once popular attractions are now left to rot. Their only visitors are urban explorers and wild animals. So let's take a look at some of these attractions. Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you the top 10 abandoned amusement parks in America. Starting off this countdown, we have Six Flags in New Orleans. Six Flags is a huge American uh, corporation uh, with parks all throughout the U.S. Hurricane Katrina. But sadly, the one in New Orleans has been abandoned. The park opened in 2000, but only lasted a couple of years. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit the park, and mm. the property flooded. The whole park was submerged in seven feet of water for about a month. The exposure to this water damaged a lot of rides, making them unsafe. There wasn't enough funding for all the repairs that they had to do, so the park was closed. Now, mm. it's only used as a film set. In fact, the film Deepwater Horizon and Jurassic World have both filmed scenes there. Moving really? on to number nine, we have the Land of Oz. Located in North Carolina, the Land of Oz was a park centered around the Wizard of Oz. It first opened in 1970 and featured a beautiful yellow brick road and had an emerald city and even had one of the dresses Judy Garland wore in the film. However, the buzz surrounding this place quickly died down. Then in 1975, there was a fire at the park that destroyed the emerald city. Mm. And then Judy Garland's dress was stolen. By 1980, wow. the entire park was well, abandoned. Planned it. Now you can only visit the park once a year as part of a Halloween attraction. In our eighth spot, we have Jungle Habitat. Located in West Milford, New Jersey, the Jungle Habitat Amusement Park allowed guests to get up close and personal with the animals. You could do this by walking or driving through a specific area. The drive through oh. area was supposed to feel like you were on a safari adventure. This amusement park had 70 different species of animals from all around the world. However, there were constant rumors of animals escaping from the park or illegal poachings happening. This, of course, damaged its reputation. But that's not what caused the park to close. It said that Warner Bros. Right. wanted to make the park bigger, but the residents of the area were not too fond of this idea. In 1976, the park shut down and all the animals were rehomed. However, after the park was closed, frozen remains of several animals were found on the premises, making them wonder what went on there behind the scenes. Coming oh, in at number seven, we have River Country. I've talked about this park before in another video, but I... <laughs> for that part, um, I feel like it's a great environment for the animals, but yeah, I think it's way better than the actual zoo because with the zoo, you have to just the animals just locked up in there in cages, not room free. But I feel like there's a great opportunity for them to roam, and I know it's somewhere in Georgia where you just they have their own, you can bring your own car and they provide a car for you and you can just feed the animals and just have a good time driving yeah I think it's oof, that'd be much better for if you want to go to an actual zoo like I'll do this instead of the zoo yeah it'd be better yeah and I thought she was going to say because people kept Open the doors to actually get in field with the animals. If if that was the case, they should provide your own car for you. So automatic lock. 
Yo, what do you say? I feel like it needs to be mentioned again. River Country Park opened in 1976 and was the first water park at Walt Disney World. The park was designed to look like a swimming hole. It had big mountains with water slides, and it was a good idea. Except a lot of bad things ended up occurring at the park. In 1980, a boy was killed at the park after getting a bacterial infection from one of the pool's water. The bacteria ended up attacking his brain and nervous system, which mm. then killed him. Then, just two years later, another guest passed away at the park. Sadly, this guest drowned after coming off one of the water slides. Then, in 1989, another drowning occurred. The park closed its doors in November of 2001, but most of it is still there, and it makes for a good place for urban explorers to check out, especially since it's now considered haunted by the souls of the people who died there. Moving on to number six, we have they don't got Bedrock Rock City. Or... Who here grew up watching the Flintstones? They can't build Man, it that is such more a classic of a... cartoon. Back in the 70s, a Flintstones-themed hmm. amusement park was opened in Williams, Arizona. It had rides such as a giant brontosaurus-shaped slide, character statues, and a Flintstones-themed diner. It also had a campground if you wanted to stay overnight. But recently, the park changed owners, and well, the new owner had new plans for the park. The park was recently closed just last year, and now this owner plans to make it into a new attraction called Raptor Ranch. Can't lie, it sounds pretty cool. But for now, the park is abandoned, and all that's left is cutout of Wilma standing near the entrance. We are now mm -hmm. at our fifth and halfway mark with Hobbiton. Hobbiton was an amusement park centering around J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. Now, you'd think that this park would be a huge success since the books were, but nope, it wasn't. Built in the 1970s, this attraction didn't have any rides or games, but instead it was more of like a nature walk where you could just walk through scenes from the book. And I think that one of the reasons why this park failed was because people want rides and games, something to, you know, like, interact with. At this park, you would walk through the story of Bilbo Baggins, and each set had a voice box that would tell you what was going on in the scene that you were viewing. But it was a failed project and ended up closing in 2009. But if you pass by the area, you can still see a sculpture of Gandalf at the door of Bilbo Baggins' Hobbit Hole. Coming in at number four, we have Chippewa Lake Amusement Park. This amusement park was operational for a hundred years before closing down. It opened in 1878 and was the hot spot for family fun. In fact, its Ferris wheel was said to be the fastest Ferris wheel in America. I don't know if that's really an accomplishment though, like I can just feel the nausea just thinking about it. Sadly, the park closed down in 1978 because of low attendance. The park was left untouched for quite some time. Then in 2008, a fire destroyed many of the structures. The rest of the structures were demolished that same year. But people really need to stop burning down abandoned amusement parks. In our third spot, we have Prehistoric Forest. It this amusement park this guy. has everything you could ever ask for. They have a water slide, a waterfall, a smoking volcano, and dinosaurs. Lots and lots of dinosaurs. Built in 1963, this park was meant to mix fun with education. The park was divided into three areas. First, you had a safari train ride that would take you through the woods filled with 70 statues of dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures. Then you had a walking tour led by a guide. You would learn more about the creatures. Lastly, there was another train which took you through the land of the leprechaun. I know, kind of seems weird, like what a dinosaurs and leprechauns have in common, but this taught you legends from early Irish settlers of the area. The park even had a fossil digging pit, which is really cool. I would have loved that. And mm. entry back in 1981 was only 275 for an adult and 175 for a kid. Man, I wish that's how cheap Disney's tickets were, because if that was the case, I'd be going like every month. Unfortunately, this park closed in 1999. In our second spot, we have Lincoln Park. And I'm not talking about the band here, or an amusement park based on the band. Lincoln Park was an amusement park located between New Bedford and Fall River in Massachusetts. In 1894, the Union Street Railway Company created Lincoln Park to connect Fall River to New Bedford. Lincoln Park was at the end of the trolley line and was originally created as a picnic park. It had picnic tables, a playground, and some grills to make your own food. Eventually, 
eventually it transformed into an amusement park. It was originally named Midway Park or Westport Park, but was later changed to Lincoln Park. This park was known for its ride, the Comet, which was a 300 foot long wooden roller coaster. But in 1986, a fatal accident occurred on this roller coaster, which kind of scared a lot of people. And they're like, mm, is it really as safe as you claim it to be? Then in 1987, another accident occurred on another roller coaster. But thankfully, this time, no one was injured. But the park was closed in 1987. Then in the 1990s, a series of fires mm. destroyed 90% of the park and the rides. What's with all these parks catching on fire? Like, seriously. Smokey the Bear is going to find out. And in our number one spot, we have Lake Shawnee. This is Lake one amusement park Shawnee. that does not have a child-friendly past. Uh, Apparently, the see. park was built on the site of the Clay Family Massacre. Basically, members of a family were kidnapped and killed on the land. Whoever thought it was a good spot for an amusement park should have been fired. The park opened in 1926 and was rumored to be haunted after oh, the death yeah. of two park guests the park closed in 1966. Now it's said that the ghost of the park's victims can be seen there at night. And that's all for today's video. Let's move on Let's to our there. comments shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from my video, top 10 mysterious fossils that shock the world. Crystal KO. Great. These moon parts have been, it would, it would have been fun to just explore the, these moon parks, but these fires, the haunting, and everything else is just so crazy and it's just so I don't know I don't know but all the human parks I, I bet there's more even part that's been abandoned but we can't even go to amusement parks right now unless we go that's the word math I'm not I'm not I'm not down with that I can't even breathe during, when I wear a mask anyway, so why would I wear one in the amusement park? If they, if they have to wear a mask, why even open it now? Wait till we, until the scene die down. I mean, the best you can do is, I don't know. I don't know, the best thing you can do, if, I feel like when it comes to, um, going to public places especially in the moon park they should have like air sanitized or even sanitizer in each section and people not so close to each other when standing in lines and that's the best thing you can do and it's not about washing your hands which you which you should be doing anyway it's about your immune system your immune system i don't know how I'm, I went to the amusement park from to immune immune system, but I get what I'm saying. So thank you guys for tuning into this video. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to. Thank you for tuning in anyway, and until next time, it's your life. Do what you want to do, positive. Have the most awesome, terrific day. Stay positive, stay blessed, and peace.